The moment is finally here, everybody. I know some of you have been waiting for this for a long time. It's time to analyze the guy known as Alan Scott. A lot of people consider him the original Green Lantern. But when you really dissect and really understand how he is, he's a lot different than the other Green Lanterns. But before I go any farther, I absolutely have to give a shout out to those that have donated to the channel. Appreciate it a lot. Alan Scott has been a member of the Justice Society of America, and he has paved the way for a lot of other superhero characters. And he's one of the some will call OGs. The Star Heart is a sentient energy of magic with powers Alan. This was actually created by the Guardians of the Universe. It is comprised of all the chaotic magic in the universe. The Guardians saw it as a threat to their plans. They wanted to balance this malevolent magic with their green energy, aka Green Lantern power, sealed it into a meteor. That's where it stayed until Alan Scott saw it, broke off a piece, and eventually made its way to Earth. And that's how Alan Scott discovered it, which I just said a second ago. Give an explanation on how Alan Scott's body works. It states here, your being is composed entirely of green flame. You bleed because you think you should. Your age, your appearance, everything, it's all based on your willpower. At the end of the day, he's not even really human no more. He's he's basically evolved. He only looks like human because that's just what his subconscious wants him to look like. This is in the post-crisis era, by the way, Alan Scott. They ask questions that even fans want to know. So, Dad, what's the ring mean? It's just a symbol, Jenny. The Starheart wanted to come back to me when Mordrew stole it. I'm linked to the Starheart. I'm a part of it. It's a part of me. Theorized that my subconscious willpower shaped it into the ring when it returned. I like to see myself as a human as possible, I suppose. Pretty much confirming that he's evolved at this point. Just to give you lore on the Starheart, Ultra Humanite used the Starheart to create a world. An entire world, they say. Ultra Humanite had five dimensional powers at this time. And even he considers the power of Alan Scott inconceivable. He said, I'm not even sure you can be killed. It has been stated that he is the most powerful human alive. He has enough power to cause violent weather across the planet. When it comes to raw speed, of course, he's massively faster than light. He can just travel to different places in space and travel through the void of space and hyperspace really fast. Like traveling from the Earth to the moon in a very short amount of time. He can react within a nanosecond. This is light work for a DC character when it comes to combat. That means he can react in a billionth of a second, which is more than likely a benchmark and more than likely he can go way faster just on the history of DC speed, right? A powerhouse in DC speed, right? Plot to be able to keep up with raw speedsters that are massively faster than the light, like Jay Garrick, for example. Intercepts folk that are going fast consistently, like Lady Liberty and stuff. It's easy to sleep on characters like Jay Garrick. Jay Garrick, for example, is able to hit Black Adam hard enough to make blood come out of his mouth cause all this destruction with his attacks using his raw speed to create that much power by the way slugfest style speed force users you know what i mean and can take attacks without just getting splatted you know what i mean speed force users fast and light beams alan scott even has so much power that he can unintentionally destroy the entire solar system if his power isn't put unchecked this is when he was dying this is what he's doing when he's not trying to that right there for you to be able to produce that type of energy, that means raw power should be able to blast away hundreds of Earths with ease, right? If you can blast away a solar system, because you got to put in consideration the distance between each planet, things like that. This being known as Eclipso was fighting the Spectre, right? Had a little bit of Star Heart's power, right? Oh boy. And he was kind of giving Spectre some issues, uh, guys. Keep in mind, this was just a portion of the Star Heart when he did that, because Alan Scott still had his power, so that wasn't obviously all of his power he had taken. Now, let's not take this feat out of context. Eclipse was one of those beings where he's technically a specter tier being without even getting powers from the star. So that should be noted. So it doesn't necessarily mean Alan Scott is specter level, but it's just something that with Alan Scott's power, it was able to give Eclipse some type of boost, if that makes sense. And we already know how specter is based on my specter video. He's insanity. Eclipse's shadow energy has somehow taken control of the star heart maintaining control of which was the reason i chose to remain paralyzed in the first place with him now controlling it instead there's no need for me to lie around i'm using what's left of the star heart's energy within me but without the star heart defeated like a battery i'll run out before long yeah alan scott got a lot of power let's talk about his versatility he has cool abilities like being able to see through walls thanks to his power can straight up turn invisible of course a battle with grandy he can kind of amplify people's powers, like amplifying Billy Batson's power on this occasion, aka Captain Marvel, or some would say today's Shazam. He even states here, I'm used to channeling powers through names. It states here, if there's any residual magic left in you, my ring could amplify it, because he's kind of magical too. He was somehow able to drain the powers of a fifth dimensional imp's power. It seems like the power is going into a jar. This dude, Alan Scott, can jam power ring, like how he jammed Hal Jordan's power ring. And he's consistently phasing through stuff, like intangibility. And more phasing. Look at his legs still in the building. And it can absorb gunfire. Night, night. Wobble, wobble, wobble. 
He can teleport evidently. So what's the point of flying at super fast speeds if you can just teleport? What's the point of flying if you can just teleport there? It's a lot faster, right? Haxi resistant stuff like being able to resist time control. Tried to age Green Lantern, but it didn't work. That ring is resistant to it. Now here's some time manipulation for you. It states here, we can make it go faster here. Do you follow me? We can accelerate this little world through time until the whole place ages to destruction. But these creatures will have lifespans measured in eye blinks. Billions may die on earth right now. I have no more humane alternatives. And he states that they won't know that they died in an eye blink because they actually lived through their life, right? Stand back, the green flame will do what has to be done. It's the power of the green flame. 10,000 years went by in the time it took Zorel and me to return to the mountain. We watched civilizations rise and fall again like tides. At the half an hour, the angel went down to see how things have changed, built a temple around him. At the speed they were advancing, the green flame spits, sensing danger on the frontiers of reality. Time is ringing out. Thomas red creatures have discovered how to extract energy from the specter. Oh, that's something you need to listen to. If you want to get a visual idea of what Alan Scott did, he pretty much had an evolution and manipulated it to where it would probably look like this until it destroyed itself, you know, evolving over the years. You know what I mean? Other Green Lanterns that he's interacted with, they even use his battery too. Time travel. I love seeing all the Green Lanterns with each other. The OG, baby. More lore on the Starheart. It can control people like Obsidian and Dr. Fate. No, I'm not joking. It states here, the Starheart tells me what to do and I obey. Dr. Fate says the same thing. Let me, Like me, like now, it's telling us to fight you all. When it comes to battle feats, he's fought Hector Hammond in a telepathic battle. Alan Scott and him had a straight on mental fight, basically. Energy barriers fight. Just fight in general, right? Not only can he detect other powerful telepaths like Miss Martian, he's able to trigger her Martian form with his telepathic skill or power in general. He's even able to contain some of the most powerful telepaths in DC. Is that Martian Manhunter? And is that Grodd I see? Oh, I'm just saying. Hector Hammond, search through this demon's brain. Let me just find what I need. A doorway, might I add. Oh, let's shoot a barrage of nukes at him and let's see how that works. It, it doesn't work. He can transport him and some others through an actual black hole. It states here, your powers are only restricted by the limits of your imagination. You're capable of concentrating and hard enough to wish us back to Earth, essentially redirecting the path of a black hole. I mean, he has consistently shown to be able to fight or take blitzes from speed people like Jesse Quick, for example. Alan Scott has went through evolutions of his power, and he's taken attacks from Supergirl and Power Girl at the same time and didn't really move at all, if we're being honest. He was able to contain Black Adam and Adam Smasher. Yes, Black Adam, the super crazy powerhouse with his shielding. Let's talk about his battle feats. Alan Scott was powerful enough to like completely destroy Solomon Grundy, like skeleton style. My anger is a flame. And like all flames, it consumes early, leaving nothing. He was able to seal a multiversal rift because cause he's that powerful. Hal Jordan said something interesting when he was uh, matching up against Alan Scott. He said, even though my force field, I can feel the heat from Alan's flame. I can't ignore him. Proving that he's on the par with other black hole level members like other Green Lanterns, like Kyle Rayner, for example. He was able to restrain characters like Kyle Rayner, for example. I have a video about Kyle Rayner. Don't forget other Green Lanterns in general have been able to contain supernova explosions. So yeah, they are in them star ranges, obviously. There's too much proof of this in Kyle Rayner's feats and stuff like that, containing a star and stuff like that before it explodes. Stuff like that. And Alan Scott is implied to be on these guys' level or even better, some would say. Kyle Rayner was a rookie at this time. That should be noted. Able to do this to or punch characters like Neuron. Keep in mind that Neuron's able to, to toy with Wally West and Jay Gary. So to be able to punch him like that is kind of cool, even though it ain't too... Flash, you know, it's just punching him, you know. What if I told you some Green Lanterns have one-shot Kryptonians before, like Alan Scott? One of his best battle feats of all time was able to fight against Mordru. Yes, Alan has fought Mordru, kind of like in a decent fight. Like, it wasn't just like a one-hit scuffle. It seemed like a serious fight, changing construct looks like a centaur, giant metal knight. Look what Mordru had to say about him. He said, I've learned from my past experience. You first, Lantern, because you're potentially the most dangerous. This is coming from Mordrew, guys. If you had your doubts about Alan Scott, you shouldn't have your doubts at this point fighting Mordrew this hard. But he seemed that he did get overpowered in this occasion. But he hung in there and got called dangerous by Mordrew. Dangerous. Here's some lore on Mordrew. That the power of Mordrew begins to take form of his giant hands. The power to move worlds, black and suns, the power to annihilate galaxies with an S. Combined into a massive fireball of force. Keep note that the difference between to be able to blast away a solar system and to be able to get blast away a galaxy. I'm talking about going from solar system blasting power level to straight blasting away a galaxy level is a at least billions of times power difference. Just to give you an idea of why that's impressive if we were to take that serious about Alan Scott being able to fight off Mordrew, but that, of course that's not the limits of Mordrew. Mordrew was able to imprison characters like Dr. Fate, for example. 
yeah, this one more Judea. I have a video on Dr. Fate, by the way, to tell you why that's impressive. Like, I know what you're thinking. He still got overpowered by Mordrew, Alan Scott did, but the fact that he was able to hang in for a couple of panels and Mordrew was able to say he's dangerous like that is impressive as heck. Even if you inevitably take the L. But you gotta remember, it was stated that Alan Scott was just trying to keep him busy. It even stated here, the light wielder did his best and fell short. You know, that type of thing. He was able to construct and maintain a giant city on the moon like an actual city. Tell me that isn't awesome. Emerald City. He's able to do this to carry this like obsidian in a very epic construct type of fashion. Like look at all those chains and locks. Talking about restraining with that type of this Green flame. That type of thing. In this occasion, Battlefield fighting obsidian. He made an energy being that was actually, he states here, I wrote the book of willpower. Bigger. Yeah. <laughs> look at the beam. It's like a big old beam. It's like a Dragon Ball Z beam. He was a helpful aid in the Spectre fighting a Japanese dragon god. Not a feather. This power bestowal, I'm telling you, with the power around his mace, the Alan Scott mace, he was able to almost beat Black Adam. Hawkman was able to do this because of Alan Scott's energy. A literal mace construct made by Alan Scott, Hawkman was using, was able to restrain Gog. Yep, that's Kingdom Come Superman over there in that corner. Alan Scott is here. He seems to be able to make like a legion of constructs to the point where he can make the whole Just League and Just Society like fight off his constructs in a busy fashion this is just epic to see i know i already mentioned these feats but yeah he was able to take control of dr fate and obsidian got characters like jay garrick contained where he was kind of possessed kind of going to ruckus he wasn't really in his right mind but all this should scale to him because it's still his power right even though he wasn't in his right mind may have his voice some of his memories and mannerisms but this is not alan scott you know showing this panel like i showed earlier just a little clearer version of it them fighting entirely construct creation just being epic fighting speed force users fighting them all at the same time all while he's sitting on the throne as always you know how dc is when it comes to retconning alan scott is no exception to this he's a little bit different in the new 52 run but let's get started in the newer run of alan scott he's avatar of green after alan's train was destroyed he was chosen by the green to be his avatar binding with him and it, and of course they gotta have an excuse to have him have a ring on so the power molded itself into sam's engagement ring giving alan his power <laughs> right this alan scott in the new 52 era probably had a lot of different power changes so don't be surprised if we see a lot of different power flux situations things like of that sort it states here then by wooding your power through it you will serve the earth and honor your dead bada bing bada bomb the green lantern it states here i get the power of the earth right you will be that energy's conduit the earth's conduit your body its storehouse and that power will shine forth from you as it would the light from a lamp visible as green energy it can take any shape or any form only limited by your imagination basically green lantern and you can fly stand and face me alan scott take this this destiny take this is yours alone that of the earth one's true night alan scott asked some interesting questions he says this evil to come will make that war seem inconsequential and you must stand in superman's stead alan scott as the Earth's new defender. Wait, the Earth selects a new champion? Why didn't you recruit someone during the Apocalypse War? The lives you could have. The world then had a sun god among its defenders. What, Superman? I'm the embodiment of the Earth's energy. In truly dark times, a champion is chosen. I would pass that power to you to fight this coming danger and all other evils abroad. I am fire, yes and light energy, all the power of the earth. It is true, Alan doesn't have his powers while wearing the ring, but he can just summon it when he needs the ring. The ring lets him know when it's necessary for him to do something. He can't resist that urge. I'm going in order from the weakest to strongest. The defeats from him in this weakest time, being an Alan Scott. Lifts up this with ease, obviously. Of course he can fly. His link to earth allows him to detect Grundy. It was stated that Grundy draws his power from dying things and he can make things decay. Alan Scott still is able to fight him. By the way, this is how Grundy gets stronger. Alan Scott fights Grundy, fighting toe-to-toe -to -toe with Grundy, causing him pain and agony. Doing so, don't lie, Alan Scott's outfit looks epic. Grundy keeps reforming because he keeps on making stuff decay. It is stated he can create things with his energy constructs by his imagination. Yeah, he's kind of like a noob right here. Gets a little in trouble here. Consists of be able to fight Grundy. Kind of hard to scale this, but yeah, you get the idea. Also has astral projection where he can like leave the physical world, meet the gray, the opposite of the green. That makes any kind of sense. Astral plane. That's the type of stuff you got to respect. Just leaving the physical plane. Mind control and willpower don't mix. Or characters that are not even Green Lanterns have resistance to mind control because of willpower. That's literally what the whole point of being a Green Lantern type character is, is willpower. So, of course, he has resistance to mind type stuff. Eventually, Alan Scott learned that Grundy really can't be defeated because his power is based on Earth. So, he's like, okay, I got to find a way to beat him by taking him out of his element. Like, take him in into space, for example. Where I can really get the real edge over him in a fight. Get freaking blasted, baby. Even though he's lacking experience and skills with his power, he was able to heal the Earth that was decayed by Grundy. 
Alan Scott. <laughs> it's nice to see him doing energy constructs like other Green Lanterns, like energy nets, hammer-like constructs. Let's not forget, he actually beat the living crap out of characters like Steppenwolf because he's just that freaking strong. They was going at it, though. It's important to know that this is Alan Scott at his absolute weakest. He was getting hit with the force of a mountain from this guy named Brutal. He actually died. He got resurrected, though. This being had, like, continental splitting power, if that makes any sense. But, yeah, the resurrection is inevitable. Power gives him awareness. He can feel everything that's going on on Earth. You already know he's connected to the Earth, and he can feel what Earth feels. But there's this thing called the Parliament of Trees. you probably seen me mention these type of things in my Dark Side video and my Swamp Thing video about how these elemental forces... The white, the blue, the red, you know what I'm saying? It states here, the elemental forces of the planet, like the green, that gives me my power, parliament, enclave, the heart of the planet. Yes, this new 52 Alan Scott is a lot different from the other one I went over. Now we're getting into the fun stuff. Was able to hold the earth in place with his construct, showing that, yeah, he's still a powerhouse range with them black hole ranges. You know what I mean? Stuff like that. Because it was a boom to reeling it in. I would put his output of power easily in the six quintillion tons of power, right? Already. Bye bye monsters easily with energy manipulation. Fights Grundy and his army. You know what I mean? Continually fighting Grundy. Stop making Earth decay, by the way. Yep, one of the uh, avatars of Earth. His constructs are strong enough to protect Earth from various meteors that were going to hit Earth consecutively. Let me blast them away. We are tasked with bringing the five avatars of Earth together. We must not fail. Like, protector of this planet avatar of its primal forces it's my job to be here on the orbital front line now we about to get into the power i mean he's already avatar of green but now he's about to be avatar of the earth like the other parliaments like the white the blue the red like uh oh he had no choice because it was a major event about to happen and he needed to do something with the avatars fused together to make this super powered being we must become one allen our powers combine our spirits combines yep the white of the sky avatar of the red yep you seeing this correctly. One can think of it like Beast Boy, Swamp Thing, and characters like that fusing together. Like, think of it like that because Beast Boy is a part of the red, Swamp Thing is a part of the green. Think of them all fusing together, Alan Scott. I just love seeing sights like this. I wonder what tier Alan Scott was right here, way higher than normal. He was able to hold the entire apocalypse with this energy for quite a bit of while because of this new power up he indeed got. Yes, that is Valzad indeed. I mean, think about what is the limitations of how big you can make a construct? He can make constructs like continental sized or like earth surface sized. He was able to project the energies of the earth into apocalypse. Yeah, you see all the different colors? Yeah, <laughs> busting a hole through the planet itself. It was implied that this could be a temporary power because he seems like he got depowered in this moment here when he tried to absorb some foreign energies, stuff like that. He doesn't seem to be at a super crazy amplified self, but hey, he can still make cool constructs right here, like this dragon. He can make a guiding light to send you on your way to help guide you to your home if you need be. Beam can travel in the vacuum of space moving super fast too. Fast forward a little further, he states, I am no longer now, I am the green, the living embodiment of this unique planet. You know, has a different outfit, things like that. Yeah, the evolutions of Alan Scott. Drawing mass from power from this new earth. <laughs> He's evolving, man. He states, my memories are those of a man, friends and lovers burned to ash and scattered to the wind, but I must not indulge in these thoughts on this day. I am the heart of a new planet. This land screams for my protection. Losing his humanity, power is still connected to the ring itself, though, if that made any kind of sense. Oh, did I forget to mention he can change his size in this new 52 era? Epicness creates this giant force field in the process. Check out this monster that Power Girl is fighting, right? Powerhouse in her own right. Kryptonian tier. Look what he does to the same monster. Is he strong or what? We just scraping up monsters in our free time with Power Girl, Supergirl. Kryptonian tears, you know, like his other stuff can create large like constructs or like palaces, things that are flashy and epic to look at. Never fight Alan Scott when he's brainwashed. He was able to fight a team of Earth's powerfulest heroes by himself. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. He's very powerful in this state. Yo, yo, Amazonians get murked, ultra humanite. Dude, you better respect him. Is that Valzai fighting multiple species included? Mightest heroes of this earth that you got to respect? Kryptonian tears? Epic. Epic outfit too. Traps? No, box. Breaks out though, but yeah. This is the strongest Alan Scott has been in the New 52 era. It states, I can feel it. The power of other worlds. The multiversal green, it strengthens me. Dark side's just insane, so. He got still got pimp slapped and messed up badly. He could barely survive the Omega Beams, but hey, while he was knocked out, he thought he was dying. He was somehow able to heal the remaining heroes though. While doing so, yeah, he got messed up. Sometimes people get the idea just because a character gets bodied that they're automatically weak, but that's just how powerful Dark Side is. It ain't nothing wrong with losing the Dark Side, especially in the New 52 era. This is where we're getting ready for the Okie Doke, channeling all the powers of Avatars 
into the ring. You asked why the parliament chose me to be avatar of the white. My presence was a test, a test to determine if you are ready. And as you can see, the chosen one has ascended. The green, the gray, the blue, the red, and the white flowing within him. The green lantern burns. Then he wants to confront Dark Side again. Bliss is Dark Side in this occasion, but he actually was able to taint the Omega Beams on this round because he's even better than he was before. Finally awakened at his fullest potential, he freaking hits Dark Side with 52 universes worth of the power. Low Ball try to say it was just only Planet Earths. No, it's a multiversal green. It, the green itself is already is more than just planet earth like it's just green but so obvious that it means the, the actual multiversal green like they said at the beginning he was able to make constructs around all the survivors of earth 2 to send them away yes i know alan scott's power was all over the place he went from beginner not knowing what he was doing to like in the new 52 era of course he went from beginner not knowing what he was doing to like an actual beast got a couple power-ups throughout the way got a power from the parliament of trees and stuff like that being a part of the green got the power of the multiversal green so one can say at that moment he was in those easily skyfather rangers at that exact moment that's one of those things why i wouldn't say he's always at those power levels right but when it comes to the green he's always usually connected to the green just maybe not the multiversal green if that makes any sense hopefully i'm perceiving that right what do you guys think post your comments down below let me know what y'all think did you guys enjoy this rundown of alan scott did you know alan scott was this strong what did you learn new about him post some comments down below let me know what you all think